Hello, welcome to this. This is an online video I'm doing talking about uh, a film made called Revolution in Ouroboros. Talking about it artistically, what influenced it, um, what imagery I used, why I used that imagery, and just basically talking broadly about the entire film, which is available to watch on YouTube now. I'll also talk about the music as well and why I chose that particular music. And uh, I'll link to the film as well. I'll include a few clips from it in there uh, with some exposition on why why I did things in a certain way, I suppose. So, without further ado, what is the idea of revolution in Ouroboros? Uh, primarily, the main philosophical theme that it explores is Nietzsche's idea of the eternal return, which is the idea that an individual has one life and that they, they are basically going to live the exact same life, the exact same way, again and again and again throughout eternity. Uh, it's the idea as well of kind of enjoy, enjoying your struggles in a way. So not, you know, kind of just, well not enjoying them obviously, depending on the nature of the suffering, but on Enduring with a strength and a smile, I suppose. So the whole film kind of explores the journey of, and it uses lots of um, footage from different films to explore the concept of one soul throughout time, a bit like Cloud Atlas, if you've ever seen that film. So it's not the same individual, per se, in the film. It's exploring the idea of, I guess, karmic rebirth, almost, essentially. So you start off with a figure in close to modern times in the war, the Vietnam War, who uh, is uh, so we're using footage from Full Metal Jacket, because the film essentially is a, it's a remix film, so I've taken source material and then applied a conceptual idea around it, and then added lots of effects and music and stuff. I'll get onto the music shortly, but yeah, so we're starting with... Uh, the Full Metal Jacket character, comedian in Full Metal Jacket, start with that, and then mix in some other effects. And what's next? Oh, um, kind of like a Christ like figure in this form of uh, Children of June, uh, you know, kind of like self sacrificial lamb, if you will. Thirdly, we proceed, I think, after that, it goes on to. Of a Frankenstein character who's trying to control life and death, then an astronaut who kind of transcends life and death by going into space. So all of it is exploring kind of archetypes within the human imagination for um, controlling life and death, I suppose, essentially, and also controlling life and controlling the path of life and controlling, trying to control, trying to be God, basically, is what a lot of it's about in a way, playing God, playing having control of everything and ultimately you know, your own destiny. Uh, music, just the music. Uh, the music is done by an amazing Russian composer I just randomly stumbled across on free music archive called uh, Kai Engel, I think is how you pronounce the name, Kai Engel. Engel. Um, you should go on this website, his, I was just instantly stunned by his music and as soon as I listened to it I was blown away. It's hard to put down, it's kind of a mix of electronic, classical, piano compositions and since I heard it, and the music kind of completely made the entire imagery and the concept come about for the film because it was just so inspiring to me, it's, it's beautiful music, it's unlike much I've ever heard before. You could probably uh, make comparisons to like Hans Zimmer, uh, maybe Max Richter in a way, so a lot of very top end uh, composers so yeah, I mean, let's say check his website out and the music. So it's lots of music. So effects. Um, I went primarily with a lot of contrast music. Uh, I used an um, Oh, Adobe, I used Adobe Premiere for the video editing, which is 
pretty standard. Um, so the effects are very, you know, of, I wanted to try and give it a kind of high contrast, kind of weird retro look, I suppose, essentially. Um, so, is there anything else I can talk about with the film? Uh, it's free to watch, it's free to consume, it's free, it's like a, I've basically released it under a Creative Commons license so people can remix it as well if they like. Um, it's not a film I've made, to, well, I've made it to screen in places, I have screened it at uh, a film event that I coordinate called Lights in Manchester. Uh, but I mean, if, you, if anybody sees this who's interested in screening it, it probably fits to art festival, art film festivals and such. And, um, obviously there were potentially um, areas around copyright because, because it's Creative Commons, we released in a Creative Commons license. That should be less so because I'm not making any money from it and it's actually not a money making film. It's not a film made to make money, it's a purely artistic film. It's made for purely artistic reasons. Anything else I can go into, I suppose. Uh, there is some interesting footage I use from Internet Archive, which is um, so I've used a lot of the footage I've used is either from film or Internet Archive. So archive public domain footage, etc., etc. So I've used uh, one of the clips is from. Well, it's actually my favourite moment in almost the whole thing. Uh, you've got a clip of Anne Rand and uh, also the, you know the philosopher. Objectivism, and then I've had an a interview with a um, MK Ultra, I think, survivor of MK Ultra being the American experimentational soldiers where they uh, dug the mass and such. And yeah, it's just describing a bad trip he did. That's probably one of my favourite movies because it makes out with some fractal imagery as well. I just think it feels like the almost emotional peak of the entire film, in a sense, I think. Well, that's how I saw it as the editor, director, I suppose. Director, in a sense, of the director, I think, but the editor, producer of the film. Uh, so, yeah, essentially, uh, Revolution Ouroboros. It's a, I would call it a remix film. And, yeah, just my talk. Boris. I hope you've enjoyed that part. It's interesting in some sense. I uh, would say goodbye and uh, yeah, check it out, watch it.